Disciplined priests are one of the most unique and interesting healers where they shield our allies and also do damage to then turn that damage into healing. I'm going to show you everything that you need to know to succeed as a disciplined priest in the war within today for season one. And this is going to be in a fairly beginner friendly format as well. So don't worry if you are a beginner. I'm going to assume you know nothing. So whether you're a veteran or beginner alike, you're in safe hands. Let's jump straight in and look at our stat priority. So you can see here on our attributes above me, our main attribute is intellect. This is our primary stat and the stat you're going to be getting on all of your gear. The more intellect you have, the more damage and healing we will do. The way to get more intellect is simply a higher and higher eye level or gear level on your gear. Now we have the secondary stats here, critical strike, haste, mastery, and versatility. Versatility. This is going to increase our healing and damage done and also reduce our damage taken. Mastery is a really interesting one. And as a disciplined priest, it's called grace. Your healing and absorption, so our shields, are increased on targets with atonement. And what atonement is, this is actually the way that we're going to be doing damage to then turn it into healing. So we're going to put spells on our allies, they gain atonement, and we then do damage to our enemies. The damage we do to our enemies gets turned into healing with allies that have atonement on them. And that is our mastery. Haste is actually going to increase your attack speed and spell casting speed, meaning if I'm casting something like Smite here, the more haste I have, the quicker I'm going to be casting that spell, reducing the cast time. Crit, of course, is going to increase your chance to do more damage and healing, and these are known as our secondary stats. This here is the priority order for your secondary stats in general, but literally, especially in the first season of the expansion, you just want to get a higher and higher eye level. Unless you are looking at the same eye level gear, secondary stats aren't going to matter. Just getting a higher eye level of gear with more intellect on is the only thing that matters. Now, before we move on, let's just really quickly look at our set bonus this season. So we've just spoken about atonement. Well, the two set bonus is increasing our atonement healing by 5%. And the four set bonus, Smite and Penance, two spells we're going to be using a lot, increase the damage of our next Mind Blast or absorb amount of our next Power Word Shield by 15% up to times. Power Shield is one of the shields we're putting on our, on our allies. And Smite, Penance and Mind Blast are some of the damaging abilities we're going to be doing to heal our animal allies through Atonement. If I just quickly put Powered Shield on myself here and I go to the top, you can see I now do have the Atonement buff on me, healed whenever I damage an enemy. And that is simply how it works. So next up, we are going to talk about the utilities and some of the defensives that we have available to us as a priest. The ones I am going to be showing you are what I consider the most important ones. You could talent into other ones, etc., and there are bits and bobs that I may not talk through, but these are the ones that you really should know about going into the war within. On the left-hand side of this action bar is things that you're doing to your enemy. And on the right-hand action bar, this is stuff that is impacting us and our allies. So starting off on the left then, we've got Psychic Scream here, which is basically going to fear our enemies and make them run away. We also have Mind Control, controlling a mind of up to... A up to one level above ours for 30 seconds. So if we're level 80, we can mind control up to level 81. Does not work versus demonic, undead, or mechanical beings. We can mind control them in really niche uh, scenarios. This is going to be really, really useful for you. And then going on to the right-hand side, we've got over here, purify, or sorry, I show dispel magic and purify disease. This will remove a disease and or a magic effect on your allies. We also have Leap of Faith, which will pull your allies to you. Let's say they are standing in something, something's about to hit them. You can basically just pull them to safety. We have Power Word Fortitude, increasing our allies' health for an hour. This will work on us. We can cast it on people in the wild. We can cast it on our party and or raid members. Now, when you do use it on yourself, if you are in a party in a raid, it will cast it on everyone. We have Angelic Feathers, where you can place an Angelic Feather 
on the ground, and you or any ally that steps over it will get a short speed boost with free charges of that. You can also make macros so that it will automatically place it at your feet and things like that. I do have a huge list of macros that I use on my Patreon account. Do sign up there if you would like to see those. And then on the bottom row, we've got Vampiric Embrace, filling you with the Embrace of Shadow Energy, causing you to heal a nearby ally for 50% of any single target shadow damage you deal. Just a great way of getting some healing back out of the damage we're going to be doing anyway. Desperate Prayer, really simply, is going to heal us for 33% of our maximum health over 10 seconds. So it's going to increase your maximum health by that for 10 seconds, but also heal you instantly for that. Lastly, we have Mass Dispel. Now, you can see here we've got Dispel Magic, and that will work on obviously one person who we target on. But Mass Dispel is going to dispel effects in this huge area from up to five friendly targets, which is phenomenal. Let's say that all of the party you're in, in a Mythic Plus dungeon or PvP battleground, wherever you are, let's say that they all get afflicted by something. Well, you can just target this over them, and you can just take it off five people rather than just one, which is literally insane. And those are the main sort of defensives and utilities that we have available to us as a priest in Season 1 of The War Within. Moving swiftly on to the actual rotation and the spells we're going to use as a Discipline Priest in PvP in the War Within, it really is quite an interesting mix. We have a lot of damage potential, but also healing. And the way that we use our Atonement, where we apply Atonement to our allies, meaning that they get healed for the damage we do, which, if you're not aware, is our first talent here. Power Word Shield, Flash Heal, Renew, Power Word Radiance, and Power Word Life apply Atonement to your target. Your spell damage heals the targets that are affected by Atonement for some of the damage done. And it's increased massively if you're not in a raid, which we won't be in this PvP um, build, which is actually not the build here that I wanted to show you. There we go. <laughs> That's better. That is exactly the build I did want. I don't know what the hell I was trying out there. So when you do go into battle, the first thing I would say to do is get Atonement up on your allies before the gates even open, maybe. And don't forget to put their Power Word Fortitude on as well. As soon as you work out your kill target, you also want to get Purge the Wicked up on them as well to get some damage out and also start that Atonement healing. To start off, let's look at the burst healing we can do. We have an amazing cooldown called Power Word Barrier on a three minute cooldown. It summons a barrier, basically reducing all damage taken within the barrier by 20% and prevents damage from delaying spellcasting, which is very useful if you can keep your enemy team in that barrier with you. If it's not on cooldown, we should use Power Word Shield to preemptively actually add a barrier so that damage won't even need healing, and it also applies atonement to the target, meaning our DPS can do healing as well for our allies. And then the next thing I would use is Power Word Life. It is on a 15 second cooldown, however, if things are going well, you shouldn't have to use it that often, because it's a big heal, single target that can only be used on targets under 35% health, so it is a bit of an emergency one. If you're in, a, in an arena, I would use Power Word Radiance once, in if a epic battleground maybe you can use it twice if everyone's grouped up but generally this is more arena focused anyway um powered radiance a burst of light heals the target and four injured allies within 30 yards and applies atonement for them meaning this is a pretty much nearly instant way of getting atonement up on nearly five people very quickly so we could just burst out radiance and start doing damage to do healing then we have Penance. You can use this on an ally to heal them or an enemy to do damage to them. Generally, I would lean towards using this on an ally unless you're really trying to finish somebody off. It can be channeled and is usable while moving. Launches a volley of holy light, again, doing healing or damage. Flash heal is just a quick and efficient um, single target heal. Again, that will also apply atonement. And then we have pain suppression, reducing all damage taken by friendly targets by a whopping 40%. And you have two charges on that. For yourself, you can use Desperate Prayer, immediately healing you for 25% of your health. And then we have one of my favorite, Ultimate Penitence. Ascend into the air and, and unleash a massive barrage of penance bolts, causing huge holy damage to enemies and or healing to allies. While ascended, you gain a shield for 50% of your health, and you're actually unaffected by knockbacks or crowd control as well. Once your atonement is up on your allies, you can start dealing damage. I already said put Purge the Wicked on an enemy ASAP so that it can start ticking over doing that damage. 
And then we have Power Infusion, which will actually increase your haste by 20%. However, there is actually a talent here, Twins of the Sun Priestess, where basically if you put it on an ally, you both get the full effect. Put it on yourself, only you get the full effect. So you do want to use this on an ally to make sure that you are both really benefiting from Power Infusion. Then we have our Void Wraith. This is something we can summon that will do damage to our targets. Summon a Void Wraith for 15 seconds that casts Void Flay from afar, and it deals bonus damage to high health enemies up to a maximum of 50% if they are on full health. And it's going to generate you some mana. So there's multiple ways that we can utilize that. Then we can use our Mind Blast and our Shadow Word Death. And sometimes we get a Void Blast as well from the hero talents, as you can see here, with huge um, Void Balls being spawned out from our Mind Blast. It's really a lot of chaos with the um, Void Weaver hero talents that we are going for in this spec. We want to use our Mind Blast on cooldown. You can use Shadow Word Death to basically finish off your enemies. If they're below 20% health, 20%, sorry, not 25. Sounds like I said both of them there. If it's below 20% health, then it's going to do massive extra damage as well. But be careful, as it can do some backlash damage on you if it fails to kill the target. And then as a filler, you can pretty much use Smite. And again, as a reminder, just make sure you're getting your atonement up on your allies first. Another thing is, see this here, our Flash Heal? That's going to be instant cast. That is because of this talent here, Surge of Light. Your healing spells and smite have a chance to make your next flash heal instant and cost no mana. And don't feel like you have to use it in the split second it comes up because it does stack twice as well. Now, apart from that, we have some great utilities. Fade is actually one that's better than you think. It reduces the range that your enemies can attack you, so a ranged player will have to come closer. But there's one thing that's always overlooked, translucent image. Fade reduces damage you take by 10%. And I feel like a lot of people forget that, so it is also a minor defensive as well. We have Rapture, which is absolutely fantastic. Immediately Power Word Shield your target, and the next five Power Word Shields have no cooldown and absorb a lot more damage. Meaning, if they're trying to burst you or your team members, you can spam out powered shields where they're absorbing, the damage comes on. They're absorbing, the damage comes on. And Rapture lasts a good while as well. So you can get so many bubbles up on them with your Rapture that they'll just be like, what is going on? How are they shielding this much damage? Void Shift is also interesting. This is going to basically swap health percentages of you and an ally so that you can kind of even it out and hopefully prevent somebody from dying. There is mind control, but I find it kind of a bit lackluster in PvP, but it is there um, if you're good with it. Psychic Scream lets out a Psychic Scream, causing all enemies within eight yards to flee, disorienting them. And then we have Dispel Magic, where we dispel magic on the enemy target, removing one beneficial magic effect. And that pretty much is everything we're going to be using for Discipline Priest in the main rotation and spells. For the PvP talents we're going to be taking, Ultimate Radiance, your power word Radiance, is now instant cast, and healing is increased by 10%, meaning we can just we can just get our Radiance out absolutely instantly, rather than having to wait for it to be cast and just get all of our atonements out. And then we have Inner Light and Shadow. Inner Light, healing spells cost 10% less mana, or Inner Shadow, damage and atonement healing is increased. And you can activate to swap from one to another, incurring a 6 second cooldown. Basically, if you need more mana, you can swap to Inner Light, and then if you just want to start doing more damage and healing, you can swap to Inner Shadow, meaning you get best of both worlds. The third one that I like to go for on a one-minute cooldown is Archangel. Refreshes the duration of Atonement on all allies when cast and increases your healing and absorption effects by 20% for 15 seconds. If you're in a bit of a spicy situation and you're like, oh, I just don't have time to get all my Atonements up again, you know, because maybe they're trying to burst you and your team down you can just refresh them instantly of archangel while also simultaneously doing more healing and absorptions meaning you know because you're going to be using this cooldown in a bit of a spicy situation anyway and now it's like well hey we can do even more healing in that situation and that is pretty much it so for this build we are going for void weaver which i personally think is a bit weird as disc priests but hey ho Basically, we're dealing with the Void. Um, we gain Entropic Rift. This is the first Keystone talent we get. Mind Blast tears open an Entropic Rift that follows an enemy for eight seconds. Enemies caught in its path suffer damage within reach. Okay, cool. On the left, then, we have an option. I'm going for Dark Energy. While Entropic Rift is active, you move faster. Cool. 
Devour matter. Shadow word death consumes absorb shields from your target, dealing extra damage to them and granting you mana. Void heart. While the entropic rift is active, your atonement healing is increased by 20%. Now that is a big one, and that's really nice. Void blast. Entropic rift upgrades smite into void blast when it's active. Okay, so our smite is enhanced, sending a blast of cosmic void energy at the enemy. So rather than, you know, smite, it's now voidy. Then I'm going for Darkening Horizon, where Void Blast increases the duration of your Entropic Rift up to a maximum of three seconds. So when we're using our Smite, otherwise now known as Void Blast, it's going to actually extend how long that Rift is up for. Void Infusion, where Atonement Healing with Void Blast is massively effective. So again, using your Smite, Void Blast, it's now going to do a huge amount, double now, um, the Atonement Healing. Inner Quietus, Powered Shield absorbs more. Uh, here I'm going for the Depths of Shadows, where Shadow Word Death has a high chance to summon a Shadow Fiend for 5 seconds when damaging targets below 20% health. Pretty nice there, sort of passive. Uh, this is more of a utility one. Void Leech, every 2 seconds you siphon an amount equal to 3% of your health from an ally within 40 yards if they have higher health than you. So equalising health across the battleground. It's an interesting one. If you don't like that, you can go for Embrace the Shadow. You know, if you don't like stealing allies' health, you absorb 3% of all magic damage taken. Absorbing shadow damage heals you for 100% the amount absorbed. That's the one I'm going to go for because I'm not a nasty health thief. And then lastly, we get Collapsing Void. Each time Penance damages or heals, Entropic Rift is empowered, increasing its damage and size, which is fantastic. After the Entropic Rift ends and it collapses, it's going to deal a load of damage split amongst all enemies within 15 yards. Okay, so, you know, if you're like, what the hell? Um, basically, we summon an Entropic Rift when we use our Mind Blast. That's going to enhance our Smite into a Void Blast. Um, when the Rift ends, it's going to do damage to everyone. It's increasing our Atonement healing. Uh, and that's that's pretty much it, really. That's the main factors I would take out of that. So it's not massively changing the spec which i like and it's it's quite fun to play when i've been practicing it. it is actually quite fun i do enjoy it i don't like hero talents where they're completely changing everything or where they're doing absolutely nothing and i think void weaver for discipline priest is a lovely middle ground for the consumables in the war within things have changed a bit including the enchants so first up you now have nerubian gem weavers this is how you add sockets from the great vault each week to your gear and we can do this on the head wrist and waist another thing that's changed is we can now have an extra two sockets on our rings and neck so we can add these with magnificent jeweler settings you can see here two on the neck and two on each ring Looking at the actual enchants we're going to use, we've got Chant of Winged Grace, giving avoidance and minus full damage percentage on the cloak. The chest is Crystalline Radiance, giving intellect. Armored Avoidance on the wrist, giving avoidance. Sunset Spell Thread gives intellect and stamina on the legs. Scout's March gives movement speed. It's 250, I think. And then Haste. Um, or, you could put haste on here, you could put crit on here. Depends what you really need. I would say to go to haste on the ring end chance. Um, but if you're at a very high eye level and you're really starting to min max and, you know, uh, simulate your character, etc., then maybe actually a secondary stat would be better. So I'll leave that one up to you. For the, um, what are they called? Consumables. It's too early for this, guys. I'm filming this at like 8 a.m. or something, or 7 a.m. Uh, Flask of Tempered Aggression, Feast of the Divine Day, that's just going to purely add intellect. You can also go for Tempered Versatility, that's probably the best all-round one for everyone, actually. Um, Mana Potion, if you need it, if you're healing in um, as a priest. Otherwise, use the Tempered Potion if you're in Shadow. Algari Healing Potion is obviously a healing potion. Algari Mana Oil is something you can actually now add on your weapon to add crit and haste. Crystallized Augment Rune to add a little bit of intellect. And then looking at the Culminating Blasphemite, this is really interesting. So it's going to add um, intellect, but it's also going to add 0.15% critical effect to your um, character if you use different gems. And you want to use an Emerald, an Onyx, a Sapphire, and a Ruby. Again, sim your character to see which ones would be most preferential, or just go with what I've got here. 
And basically that means then that each of these different colors is going to give 0.15 effect on your crits. So if you only have rubies, it's only going to give 0.15. But if you have one of each color, it's actually going to give up to 0.60% effect on critical strikes. Don't use amber though, just use these four colors that I have shown you here. Thank you so much for watching this guide. I hope it was really useful for you in The War Within Season 1, whether it was for Mythic Plus or raiding. If you do have any questions, I'll be happy to help. My Patreon is in the description below, and that is where you can find my LVI profiles, which I'll show you in a second. And also, I'm putting together a huge macro list for every single spec that's going to be really useful for you in The War Within as well well. I am doing all classes and specs for The War Within, so if you are new to the channel, then please do click this playlist here to check out what else I have, which is all of them. <laughs> there will also be PvP guides on this channel as well for War Within Season 1, so make sure to look out for that. This here is the UI that I was referring to. As you can see, we've got... Um, target frames, etc., cetera, um, left and right, and raid frames go in the middle here, and then weak auras in the middle with an action bar down here. Chat is behind where my camera is, minimap and details, etc., are here um, on the right. All of the plater profiles, the voodoo, the LVI, etc., details profile has all been made by me, and again, you can get this on my Patreon should you uh, like it.